If justice be not a natural principle, then it is no principle at all. And that quote comes from Lysander Spooner's work on natural law, which is what we're going to be reviewing today for the book review. And I wanted to bring it up because, you know, we've been discussing a little bit about some of the, well, political divides in our country in a lot of ways, uh, discussing that with Ross Benish in this week's podcast. And it's just been covered a lot, I think, especially over this past year during the pandemic. And I think part of what this boils down to is obviously I've talked about we can't have conversations with each other and we undermine each other and we're trying to score political points. But I think the deeper reason for that is we often are working with people who do not have a political philosophy. They don't have a firm foundation for what they believe and so they're insecure in what they believe and I'll admit that I've been like that at times I'm fairly secure I think now but I do think I can still be proven wrong on things or you know brought to new ideas I'm distributism is one where I'm fully uh, willing to say that I might be interested in that and as a viable system I don't know yet I have to look into it but I think the comfort in being able to say, I'm going to go learn more about this idea that I disagree with or that I think is wrong or whatever it is, so that I can build upon it and maybe see if I'm right or wrong. That I think you have to have a political philosophy in order to incorporate new information and how to say, oh, this is why I'm wrong and how I can bring this new idea in and take out the old one and why that old one was wrong. And how it this thing now can kind of fit into this broader view of the world that I have. And I think that's what we have to be able to do. And I think there's a lot of people who don't have that ability in our culture today. And so what we're going to talk about a little bit is what is political philosophy? What is natural law? You know, maybe a little bit about my political philosophy, but where these sorts of ideas come from with what Lysander Spinner is talking about. And so... Basically, political philosophy is just like any other philosophy with a modifier. It is sort of studying how the political landscape works and developing a view of the world that you can incorporate political facts and political ideas and policies into and say, okay, here's how this philosophy, this idea about the world plays out in reality. And so, for instance, the one that we'll be talking about is natural law. That is a political philosophy, an idea about the world, that there is an order to the world, you know, just as there's a scientific order and we can discover the laws of gravity and the laws of motion and all of these things, there's a, there's a moral order to the world where we can discover the laws of how we're supposed to interact with each other and that there is a moral law that is discoverable just like there are scientific laws that are discoverable, right? And when I talk about laws in that case, you're talking about operate the way that the universe generally operates. So it's not like they're unbreakable necessarily either, just like regular laws at times can be broken or I guess not broken but superseded by a more pressing and imminent law right so the moral law and the and the natural law alike they both have this gravitas to them that there is a way that we're supposed to interact with each other there is a way that we're supposed to work together and you know there's a like what he says in that quote at the beginning he says you know, if justice be not a natural principle, it is no principle at all. So if there isn't this natural thing that is justice, that is mercy, that is, you know, righteousness, whatever you want to say, you know, that are duties and rights, if these aren't natural things and they're given to you by government, well, they're not actually real. They're just what, you know, the left kind of talks about as constructions. You know, there's a social constru- social constructs at that point if they are given to you, in fact, by government. But they're not. 
they precede government. They, in fact, supersede government. Government is there to protect those rights and to be a system in order to serve the individual in protecting and the family and the society in protecting those rights. And so that is what I think we have to recognize about a political philosophy is that it's, you, you can see there, I, I mean, I would say that that is pretty close to what my political philosophy is, is that as far as natural, as far as politics goes, I think we follow natural law. We follow what is right, just, and what will preserve liberty. That is kind of where I stand. But to dive deeper a little bit into natural law, basically what natural law is, is an understanding that the world has order to it and that that order is discoverable. At the most basic level, that's what you get from natural law. And then from there, you have to discover what that order is. So I think a lot of people put on there, you know, that rights are natural law that, you know, I've kind of loaded some of those things in, but that's not necessarily the case. You have to, I mean, it is the case, but you have to discover that, right? It's like if I said there's the scientific method and the science, you know, five, you know, and I said that a thousand years ago and I said the scientific method will prove gravity and this and that. Well, you know, it does eventually prove gravity exists and these other things that we have now as scientific facts, but the method itself doesn't necessitate those things it just uncovers them for you right it's like if i stood in a spot and said there's dinosaur dinosaur bones here and we started digging we might uncover dinosaur bones but you know there's a natural law kind of serves as a ground surveyor so i can look and see oh yes there are dinosaur bones here (laughs) we can dig here right it kind of points you in the direction almost It's not just like randomly trying to find what is right for a society. It is a method that helps you along the way. And it is a framework and a way of understanding the world that you can root your ideas in. And now you can still have disagreements about what is natural law. I mean, for instance, there's a big debate over gay marriage, so-called gay marriage, and, you know, whether or not gay people can live in a long-term monogamous union and if that's in keeping with natural law and all these things and you know the argument from conservatives and from you know especially conservative christians is and conservative jews and muslims is that that is not in keeping with the order of things the natural order of things and there are good arguments i don't think they overcome the obstacle but there are good arguments in favor of saying that you know, and I've, I think I've articulated them before that, you know, your computer is for being a computer. It does computer things, but if you're in a emergency situation, you can use your computer as a weapon, right? And so there are secondary functions to uh, items and there's, em- that you can have a telos that emerges that is not necessarily part of what it's originally intended to be for. And so I've heard that argument for And I I think it's pretty solid, but I just don't think it overcomes the full weight of the arguments against it. But anyways, that's kind of a place where you can see and use natural law and teleology, like I just mentioned, a telos. That's something that is also incorporated in this. That's, this is all kind of pulled from, sorry, sorry about that. Um, It's all kind of pulled from. Aristotle's ideas and Plato's ideas about the world, but primarily Aristotle, that there is this order. And then over time, our society built upon that and tried to discover more and fine tune where the moral lines are. And you have, you know, John Locke's political philosophy coming in and many more uh, later on in the Enlightenment time. And that's where kind of Lysander Spooner comes from. And our Declaration of Independence, you know, the founders of the Declaration of Independence, they were really talking about natural law. That was their political philosophy that this world has order and men are supposed to be have liberty and that they are supposed to govern, have self-governance and the opportunity to do that. And that's where we launched our, our revolution from was these ideas. And so... 
And that was because these ideas were handed down to us by the society that created the colonies, the British, and so on. And so I think that this is a good book to read for natural law, for understanding what natural law is, because it's short. <laughs> you can get some very dense things, but this is just, you know, a few pages. I mean, it's probably 25, 30 pages, not even, it's like 20 pages. And that just makes it very easy to get through and understand the basics, but not you're not going to get the full comprehensive view, but you are going to get the basics of what natural law is and how you can start to apply it. And he talks a lot about justice and, and he gets into how governance should work based on natural law some. And so I think it's great for, he's very much a Jeffersonian. Like Sanders Spooner is kind of a, in the Jeffersonian line of political thinking. And so it's good to get his view on these things and to get other people, like I said, at the beginning, if you want to get a more well-rounded understanding of the world, you have to continue to read things you may or may not agree with. And while I kind of run along the Jeffersonian lines, I think that it's I still read other political philosophies and they've moved me more conservative, for sure, in a lot of ways. So I think it's good to read those things, see where your errors are and be able to incorporate it because no political philosophy is comprehensive and I think that's another important thing that we have to recognize is that the talking points that we spew from Fox News or from CNN, they do not incorporate the whole picture at all. And so when you're battling back and forth on those, you're missing out on a lot more of the real debate. And so that's what I want to help bring you to. That's what I want to help get you started thinking about. And so I think if you want to get a better understanding of natural law, an intro into it, and see kind of where it ends up, right? You can go back to Aristotle. I've reviewed some of his books on ethics and politics. I think those are great places to go to begin to understand how natural law starts to evolve into, or I guess how political and ethical discussions are aligning themselves very early on in our society with this idea of a natural law, that there is unchanging principles that we discover. And I think that really that's the biggest thing that I want to argue for is that there are unchanging principles that we discover because that seems to be the first place that we have to get people to. If you can argue people to that, then we can discover what those principles ought to be. But in our society, it's so hard to have these conversations because one side of the aisle says that there are unchanging principles. I guess it's not one side of the political aisle necessarily, but one section of our society says there are unchanging principles principles that we discover and the other part of our society says things are relative things are subjective even a lot of libertarians fall into this and <laughs> I just try to you know nudge them the right way because really that's not the case and so and it and their idea ideas really fall apart if that's what they believe that things are relative or subjective and so that's what I want to kind of argue for in this is we should be building that up and I think this is a good way to learn how to articulate natural law, learn what natural law is a little bit better, and be able to help bring someone into the understanding of what, why natural law is important in a political philosophy. And so that is it for today. I know I skipped announcements at the beginning, so I'm just going to remind you to uh, like and subscribe on YouTube, like the video, comment, all that stuff on podcast, you know, please subscribe if you're not subscribed already and share this and leave a good rating and review all those things help boost us in the algorithm get more people involved in the conversation of our generation and if you'd like to support what i'm doing you can go over to conversationofourgeneration.com slash subscribe and there you can subscribe for five dollars a month get access to my deep dive into the nico mckean ethics that i'm doing right now as part of the class on the golden mean so going in book by book, chapter by chapter, and discussing what all the ideas are. And each book is, you know, 20, I don't know exactly, like 30 pages-ish. And, I mean, it's a 30-minute video discussing the ideas there. So really good stuff. You get uh, my book sent to you. So free copy of the book as well for $5 a month and access to the Discord community. So definitely head over there, conversationofourgeneration.com slash subscribe. And... Be sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, all those places, and 
get involved with the conversation of our generation. I'm curious what you have going on out there, what you're talking about. And if you haven't gotten into the mailbag, I think the mailbag episode might be coming out next Tuesday. It depends. I might push it off another week and we'll see. We'll check it out. We'll see. But make sure you get those uh, in. Just go to conversationfiregeneration.com slash contact or go to Twitter and mention me and in a tweet and, or DM me, whatever you want to do, and I'll get a hold of those. And if there's any podcasts out there that I should have on as guests, any people or thinkers that you think would be good, definitely let me know. Shoot me an email or, you know, it's conversation of our generation at gmail.com. You can, <laughs> had to think about that. You can uh, shoot me an email there. Go to co- the contact part of the blog. Find me on Twitter, Facebook, etc., and let me know who I should be talking to. So with that, thanks for listening to this episode of The Conversation of Our Generation. Let's get the dialogue going. I'll talk to you next time.